just focus on those inputs every single day, that's when you're able to stay patient. Yeah. So when you're putting in those numbers every day, it's really, it's, it's just a matter of time, Yeah, you know. How's it going guys? Welcome to another episode of Secrets of Silent Success. Today we have the one and only Balin Mozan. How you doing this afternoon, brother? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Doing good, man. I'm happy to be here, bro. Let's jump into it. Let's do it. Cool, cool. So you started getting that entrepreneurial bug early, right? You selling burritos and stuff in grade school. Tell me about your entrepreneurial journey and where you are today with your company. Yeah, so like you said, I started in uh, middle school selling burritos to my classmates. And yeah. It was pretty funny. My mom would make like these really good breakfast burritos and yeah, I would yeah. stuff them in the bag and I would <laughs> take them to uh, school and they knew me as the burrito guy. Yeah. So from there, um, I had a couple of other ventures. So okay. in high school, I tried a few things and then uh, college, um, I tried a few things as well. Mm -hmm. And then finally, um, 2019, 2020, uh, I started dabbling into social media marketing a little bit okay. um, towards the end of 2019, uh, real estate, wholesale. So I was doing like a lot of different things yeah, in yeah. 2019, just trying to like find my path. And then finally, uh, 2020, I'm like, okay, I think I want to focus a little bit on social media marketing. Yeah, yeah. So what we did was uh, we was doing website design and, okay. you know, uh, graphics and logos in mm -hmm. 2020, mm -hmm. but still, I'm dabbling with multiple things because I'm not sure if this is going to work. Sure, sure. So fast forward to 2021, that's when um, I was like, okay, I think we got something. Yeah. Um, and that's when we started focusing on content for e-commerce brands for Byte Media. So yeah. it's been a journey from, you know, middle school to um, now. So that, that's, that's how we got to start. Yeah, yeah. I know a little bit of us talking off camera, talked about going to Oklahoma State mm -hmm. and going from like a media music major to entrepreneurial major. Um, one of the things I heard you talk about was why am I studying business when I can just go start one, right? When did, when did that idea come to mind and how did you take the initiative to actually start the business? Yeah, I mean, just, you know, going to class every day, uh, within the different electives that we had um, when I was a major in entrepreneurship at OSU, I just kind of came to a conclusion like, yo, <laughs> what, what, what's really going on here? Like, yeah. we're learning about building a business, but we're not really doing it. And I feel like the best way to actually build a business is to actually build it, you know? Yes, yeah. You don't necessarily have to go and get an education to you know, really uh, start and build a business. So that's how that kind of came about. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of what led to, you know, where we're at now and, you yeah. know, just trying to grow that, so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, w I would ask you, so this is not in the show notes, but you talked about the best way to learn is experiential knowledge. Go out there and do it. Go out there and build the business, right? Absolutely. Uh, I would ask you, what are two or three things that you've learned uh, about building a business that may be a surprise, right? For me, um, I had no idea how much discipline it was gonna teach me, right? I, I didn't go off to the military and I don't know what military discipline is like. I know it's real, but yeah. man, being an entrepreneur, it teaches you discipline. But I, mm -hmm. I would ask you, what things have you learned, two or three things that you've learned from being a business owner and entrepreneur? Yeah, that's a great question. So the number one thing that I learned have learned um, is really that you can only go as far as your team. So hmm. a lot of people get into business and entrepreneurship for themselves, which I I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. I mean, I think there needs to be a deeper purpose because entrepreneurship is too hard to only do it for yourself. Yeah. Uh, but I would say the number one thing, uh, and we'll get into two a little bit later, but it's really your team because uh, at the end of the day, if it's just you and you're doing pretty well. Just imagine what you could do with 10, 10 of yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so one is, you know, you have to have a team. If you don't have a team, uh, definitely start, you know, building towards that. I mean, in the beginning stages, I do understand you got to start solo. Sure, I mean, sure. that it, it is what it is. But definitely, I would say uh, the first one is uh, building a team. Uh, now, the second thing that I've learned is you, you just got to be optimistic. 
about everything. Hmm. Uh, because I'm a believer, I believe in God, and you know, just having my faith and believing in God has uh, really helped me. And I, I, I say that because with being optimistic, combining those two things, mm -hmm. uh, I think has really uh, taught me a lot about, you know, just entrepreneurship. Yeah. So uh, I would say those two things of team building and then also being very optimistic, yeah. never giving up. Yeah, yeah, no, man, that's awesome. I think I can have a whole episode about team building, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right, you gotta build a people and the people build a business. Um, I wanna talk about Bite Media a little bit, right? About what you all do. Mm -hmm. um, I know the uh, the term is French, right? Talking about quickly, them quick turnarounds. That's, that's everything in business, right? So I wanna talk about the name, talk about how I got started and what you guys are doing today. Yeah, so funny story, um, Back in college, I tried to start a bike rental service okay. with some homies, and we came up with the name Bike, which okay. means quick in French. Yeah. And my issue in college uh, was getting around the class. So, you know, I would uh, walk around, but one class was here, and then another class was on the other side of campus. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, I can't keep doing this. And then from there, I got my bike stolen. So I'm like, <laughs> bro, yeah, let's let's start a bike rental service. So I went as far with the, with the homies as looking at manufacturers. Mm -hmm. We were uh, going to different uh, bike rental, well not bike rental, but we went to different uh, biking companies and okay. looked at their bikes, mm -hmm. but they ended up falling through. Yeah. But the name was still there. Gotcha. So I, I believe this was like 2017, 2018. So fast forward to uh, 2019, 2020, I'm like, yo, we got this name Vibe. It's fire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we got to do something with this. So uh, 2020, like I said before, we were doing uh, website design, graphics, and all that. So mm -hmm. Fight Media, that that's what the name was. But we didn't really have no, like, play with it, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. we we finna get to that. We finna get to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but 2021 came around, and I'm like, yo, we got to do something with this. So when we started focusing on creating content for e-commerce brands, I'm like, mm -hmm. yo, why don't we create, why don't we make our slogan to be, we create content at the speed of culture? Because one, like 85 to 90% of our team, we're all minorities. And yep. then two, we're staying in tune with culture yes. through the content that we create. So that's kind of been the play on that. But it's another thing with that. We actually uh, deliver our content in a fairly timely manner. So yeah. typically when you're working with agencies and media companies, you have to wait wait, you know, three to four weeks, sometimes longer than that, yeah. to re receive your content. But with us, you're getting your content in seven to 10 days. So we're, we're kind of playing off of that right there. Yeah, yeah. As, now, as, as well as the culture part. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. man, that, that, that's awesome neat to, to be able to, uh, like you say, uh, not only have the play on words, right, but to actually then deliver <laughs> all yeah. the service you're gonna say you deliver. I would ask you what's been a, a key to having the quickness in that turnaround, to have the, the bite in yeah. the turnaround time yeah, of those six to 10 days. Yeah, uh, so I'm gonna go back to the team, man. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to do it without the team. So I think just having that team that understands, you know, the expectations and yeah. what needs to be done, yeah. that's, that's where we really get that from, so. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, man. It's yeah. all about the team. Uh, one of the things that I heard you talk about was, was patience, right? Patience is key. Um, talk to me about your relationship with patients, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about starting different ventures. Was it like, oh, this is not moving fast enough, or oh, this one is going too slow? What's been your relationship with patients? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's definitely develop, developed over time. Uh, so I'm patient, but I also move with speed. So mm -hmm. successfully love speed, but at the same time, I do believe that you have to be patient and. Uh, Really, just over the years, I've developed, you know, just being patient because, I mean, you look at the greats, LeBron James, mm -hmm. uh, Tom Brady, uh, even different actors and stuff like that, musicians, you know, if they started something um, for like one year, two years, and then they quit or they started something and quit within, you know, eight, mo eight months, you wouldn't know who LeBron James was or who, you know, Whoever it is, you, you wouldn't know who they were. So mm -hmm. 
I believe that's one of the common traits that a lot of people that are very successful have is just that patience, you know? Yeah. Because without it, it's like, you're just going to be in like a, a rat race, mm -hmm. just trying new things over and over again, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I would ask you, how do you uh, personally stay patient in the midst of um, other individuals being in a rat race or the things that you may see on social media, what are some granular things that you do, whether that's relying on your faith or whether that's trust in the process, what are some granular things that you do that you can advise others that may help them also uh, have a good relationship with patients? Yes, so absolutely having faith is the number one thing that uh, I personally do and I would recommend to uh, everyone. But uh, aside from just you know having that patience, I would say you have to have quick well, not quick wins, you have to have small wins. Mm -hmm. So every day, uh, what I like to make sure I do is um, I'm putting in the inputs to get the outcome I want. Mm -hmm. Because you can control the inputs, but you can always control the outputs yeah. of uh, your situation. So when you're able to, you know, just focus on those inputs every single day, that's when you're able to stay patient. Because it's like, okay, I got this quick win today. I did, you know, I sent 30 emails mm -hmm. reaching out to clients and I did this and that. I'm good to go, you know, but when you don't have those inputs that you're putting in, it's really hard to be patient because you don't really know mm -hmm. what's going to happen because a lot of things is just like a numbers game. Yeah. So when you're putting in those numbers every day, it's really, it's, it's just a matter of time, Yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I don't want to go too much on a tangent, but there's a guy by the name of Alex Ramosi. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of Alex Ramosi. Yeah. But, man, he talks about, bro, you just, it's all about put. It's the inputs, man. It's yeah. the input. That's the only thing you control with your effort and what you're putting in. So mm -hmm. I agree with that 100%. Uh, I think one of the most awesome things, man, uh, you're a young man and you've, you know, done all of these business ventures, even from uh, the burritos, right, oh, yeah. to, to the bikes to now uh, mm -hmm. the media company. Uh, it sounds a lot about um, self-starting, trusting yourself, stepping out there and just doing it. Yeah. Uh, and I've heard you talk about that before. What's the importance of literally going out there and doing it, even when it's scary, even when it's unsure? Uh, how do you go out there and take that first step? Yeah, uh, I mean, to me, it's better to live with uh, failure than regret. So I'd rather know that I tried something versus I could have tried it. You know, yeah. so yeah. that that's really my main thing with that. Awesome, awesome. I would ask you, man. Hey, we're we're a couple of days into the new year. Yeah. What's what's on the horizon for 2024? What are you looking forward to uh, for the new year? Yeah, man. Uh, just growth in every area: health, uh, spiritual relationships, yeah, uh, wealth, all of that. Um, but I would say the main main part is really just growing with the team and just trying new things. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, um, by the time this recording has released, we would have uh, gone to Spain with the wow. team. So we're actually going to be shooting content out there. Uh, Congrats! Super so, dope. Super yeah, dope. Appreciate yeah. it. Uh, yeah. We're doing something we call a call a product content content tour where we shoot your uh, product around the world. So, just doing more stuff like that and just being in different lights and you know traveling a little bit I don't want to travel too much because yeah. I love to work bro yeah, yeah I yeah. love to just like put my head down and work but I would just say you know just growing in every way possible you mentioned your ability to um, like put your head down and work mm -hmm. right that you love to work um, where do you think that comes from do you think that is something that's uh, natured, like, hey, you just born with the ability to put your head down and work, mm -hmm. uh, or do you think that's something that's been nurtured, right? Whether that was from your parents, whether mm -hmm. that's from school, like, how, what do you think that ability to sit down and just do the work and enjoy it comes from? Um, I would, I would definitely say it's something that I was born with. I, I mean, I can't speak for everyone. Yeah. But personally, for myself, uh, just from a young age, I've always wanted to just put my head down and do different things. There's yeah. never really been a time in my life that I can think of where I just was coasting. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, w I would just say that. Yeah, I see. I see. Yeah.
Cool, cool. No, I just wanted to, I always like to ask people, because obviously you talk, or I talk to a, a lot of entrepreneurs and mm-hmm. uh, just the relentless ability to work is mm-hmm. insane, right? And I think, I'm, yeah. I think I can work hard too, but I mean, you just meet some people that are just like monomaniacal about the work, bro. And I'm just like, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, I don't like, so I don't know you're born that way. I don't mm-hmm. know if you read enough books to get that way. Like, I, I don't know, but yeah. I definitely think that's a key. I, th- I think I definitely think that if you don't have that, uh, if you're not born with it, it can definitely develop over yeah. time. It may be a little bit harder. Yeah. But I, I think it can go either way. You can be born with it, or you can develop it. Yeah. Uh, but if you're if you're not born with it, you're definitely going to have to put in that work to kind of just sit down and put your head down because when you're looking at these different people online and they're like super successful or they're doing this and they're doing that. It's kind of hard to just sit there and be like, yo, I'm not where they're at right now. I yeah. got to put my head down. I got to stay disciplined for a certain amount of period. Yeah. And even if I do stay disciplined, I don't know the type of results exactly. I will get. So I, I, can, I can definitely see why people may have trouble with keeping their head down. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. So this is called the Secrets of Silent Success podcast. So I would ask you, what is your secret to success? Um, that's a great question. I would say the ability to just keep going, the ability to outlast. Yeah. Um, I think that's, I think that's key. So. Cool. We'll leave it there, brother. Yeah. I appreciate you, man. We'll do it again sometime, brother. I appreciate you. Awesome. I appreciate you.